the simplest that I can think of, perhaps it's almost an insult, it's not meant that way. Suppose we have A dot B, and A is the one that you already have on the blackboard there. Right here, that's A. But B is just 2y dot. 2y roof. That's all it is. Well, what is A dot B? A dot B, there's no x component of B. So that becomes zero, this term becomes zero. There is only a y component of B, so it is minus five times plus two, so I get minus ten because there is no z component. Simple as that, so it's minus ten. I can give you another example, example two. Suppose A itself is the unit vector in the y direction and B is the unit vector in the z direction. Then A dot B is what? I want to hear it loud and clear. Zero. Yeah, zero. It is zero. You don't even have to think about anything. You know that these two are at ninety degrees. If you want to waste your time and want to substitute it in here, you will see that it comes out to be zero. It should work, because clearly A of Y means that this, this, A, this is one. That's what it means. And B is Z, that means that B of Z, that this is one. And all the others do not exist. Well, I wish you luck with that. And we now go to a way, way more difficult part of multiplication, and that is vector multiplication which is called the vector product, or also called, most of the time I refer to it as the cross product. The cross product is written like so, A cross B equals C. It's a cross, very clear cross. And I will tell you how I remember, that is method number one, I'm going to teach you just like with the dot product two methods, I will tell you method number one, which is the one that always works. It's time consuming, but it always works. You write down here a matrix with three rows. The first row is X roof, Y roof, Z roof. The second one is A of X, A of Y, A of Z. It's important if A is here first, that that second row must be A. And the third row is then B. B of X, B of Y, B of Z. So these six are numbers, and these are the unit vectors. I repeat this here, verbatim. You'll see in a minute why I need that. And I will do the same here. Okay, and now comes the recipe. You take, you go from the upper left-hand corner to the one in this direction. You multiply them all three, and that's a plus sign. So you get AY, so C, which is the cross, A cross B, equals AY times BZ, times the X roof, but I'm not going to put the X roof in yet because I have to subtract this one, minus sign, which has AZ BY. So it is minus AZ BY, and that is in the direction X. The next one is this one, AZ BX. minus this one, AX, BZ. In the direction Y. And last but not least, AX, BY. Minus AY, BX.
in the direction of the unit vector z. So this part here is what we call c of x. It's the x component of this vector. And this we can call c of y, and this we can call c of z. So you can also write that vector then that c equals c of x, x roof, plus c of y, y roof, plus c of z, z roof. It's the cross product of A and B. We will have lots of exercises, lots of chances you will have on assignment two to play with this a little bit. Now comes my method number two. And method number two is again, as we had with the dot product, is a geometrical, geometrical method. Let me try to work on this board in between. If you know vector A, and you know vector B, and you know that the angle is theta, then the cross product, C, equals A cross B, is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of theta not the cosine of theta, as we had before with a dot product. It is the sine of theta. So you can already immediately see that this will be zero if theta is either zero degrees or 180 degrees, whereas the dot product was zero when the angle between them was 90 degrees. This number can be larger than zero. If the sine theta is larger than zero, it can also be smaller than zero. Now we only have the magnitude of the vector, and now comes the hardest part, what is the direction of the vector? And that is something that you have to engrave in your mind and not forget. The direction is found as follows. You take A, because it's first mentioned, and you rotate A over the shortest possible angle to B. If you had in your hand a corkscrew, and I will show that in a minute, then you turn the corkscrew as seen from your seats clockwise, and the corkscrew would go into the blackboard. And if the corkscrew goes into the blackboard, you will see the tail of the vector, and you will see a cross, a little plus sign, and therefore we put that like so. A cross product is always perpendicular to both A and B, but it leaves you with two choices. It can either come out of the blackboard or it can go in the blackboard. And I just told you which convention to use. And I want to show that to you in a way that may appeal to you more. This is what I have used before on my television help sec sessions that I've given at MIT. I have an apple, uh, not an apple, this is a tomato. Not a tomato, it's a potato. <laughs> I have a potato here, and here is a corkscrew. There's a corkscrew. I'm going to turn the corkscrew as seen from your side clockwise. And you'll see that the corkscrew goes into the potato in. That's the direction then of the vector. If we had B cross A, then you take B in your hands and you roll it over the, over the shortest angle to A. Now you have to rotate counterclockwise. And when you rotate counterclockwise, the corkscrew comes to you. There you go. And so the vector is now pointing in this direction. And if the vector is pointing towards you, then we would indicate that with a circle and a dot. In other words, for this vector, 